Mr. Yeager's back in working on it. Okay. Ready? This special meeting of the Wetzel County Board of Education is called to order. To begin our meeting, I will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation which Mr. Jones will give. Those wishing not to participate may stay seated. Please stand. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States the of America. Of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation. For which it stands, under God, one nation, under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Heavenly Fathers, we humbly bow in your presence this morning, Lord. We thank you for, for giving us another day in this great place we call home. We thank you, Father, for the blessings of life that you've given us. Father, in this time of trouble, we pray that you that you will look after each of us as you know everyone's needs. Bless us, Father, and, and guide us in the way that you have us to go to lead us through this pandemic. Father, we pray especially this morning for, for our students that are suffering, uh, particularly the, the two students, one from 100 and one from, from Payton City, that, that you will touch their bodies and mend them, Father, and look after their needs. Bless us as we go through this meeting that uh, give us guidance and wisdom that we can do the correct things. Thank you for all that work to make Wetzel County Schools what it is. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. To begin our meeting, uh, Mr. Tubman, uh, this is the budget work session. Do you want? Do you have anything you want to say, or do you want to go right to Jeff? No. Yeah. yeah just real quick, I just want to thank uh, Mr. Lancaster. He put the presentation together. Uh, we uh, went through it. He. Uh, reviewed it with me, but I just want to thank him and uh, we'll let him go. Um, you guys have been through this and uh, we'll let him start his presentation. Thank you, Mr. Lancaster. Sure thing. Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. <clears throat> yes. So, you know, I'm going to fly through a lot of this presentation. You all have this in front of you. Um, had a chance to take a look at it. There are some things towards the end of the uh, meeting that we will need to discuss, make some decisions on. Um, you're welcome to stop me at any time as I go through this. I'm going to touch on some things that I feel are important from some of the discussions we've had um, and some of my experiences here since 2001 when I became treasurer here. So we're going to start out. Of course, you see the slide in front of you, which is the first slide, which shows one of our bus drivers handing out food um, to a, an excited young lady there. So uh, it's strange times right now, um, but, but uh, we're gonna go through this and, and there are still some uncertain things as to what's gonna happen next year, what that's gonna mean financially to us. We'll talk about that. So what we're talking about here is our financial budget for the school year 2020, 2021, next year. Everything's based on final computations. These are our, our numbers. Start out with a little levity here. Homeschooling day one, we see Mr. Baldwin uh, handling it rather well, I think. I always start out this presentation. I've done budgeting for private industry as well used to work for a Fortune 500 company in Kentucky. And there were some things you could do to, to change your revenue numbers. You could mess with sales a little bit. You could roll out new products. You could increase prices, decrease prices. There is not much you can do in a school system. It makes it a lot easier to budget, really, because you know how big the pie is. So I always put that pie up there because if – Say we have a pie and somebody comes in and and hello, Bill. Someone comes in and, and takes half of the pie, well then that leaves a lot less of a slice for everyone else. So it's like that with our budget. We have so much that we're allocating. If we put more into maintenance and facilities, that means we've got to cut something else. So Let's talk about Wetzel County and what's the situation we're in um, that 
that drives our finances. Got a graph here and it doesn't tell you what it is yet. And I did that on purpose. You will see um, Wetzel kind of looks like they're on an island there. What I'm not telling you what that measures. You might be able to guess. I'm going to tell you in a second. But you can see the southwestern part of the state. Um, you'll see Clay and Webster and Barber, but you'll see Wetzel here in the same color on that graph. What this is measuring, as you might have guessed, is poverty. And so even though we've said we may have the same students as Tyler and Marshall and Marion, this graph shows it's a little different. Maybe we are a little bit on an island in Wetzel County as far as poverty goes. The lighter color there is showing that we're greater than 23% in our county poverty-wise. There's a breakdown that of the 15,000 and some, some people that were measured, 3,500 of those are below the federal poverty line. And 1,200 of those are children. So it presents its own challenges to uh, educating our children. Um, finances, this is a, a graph that's not very encouraging to Wetzel County, you'll see uh, per capita income by area. This is from 2017. I found this, I thought it was interesting. It shows us some of our neighboring counties. It shows West Virginia as a whole, and it shows Wetzel lagging behind there. That just follows up on that graph. 10 largest employers by county. Wetzel County Board of Education is the largest in Wetzel County. Um, so, you don't really want to see that in a county school. Uh, you'd rather see a lot more business in the area, but, but we're not seeing it. So when you see those sorts of things, poverty and not much business, this is what you tend to see. This is a very disturbing trend. We've all seen this. We, it hasn't changed. We have a declining enrollment in Wetzel County for several, several years. We've lost since 1982, half of our students. Um, reason I bring this up is that, as we're gonna talk about, used to be the major factor in determining how much money we had to budget. But things have changed because now this has come along. Uh, the, the technology, the, the Marcellus, the Utica, the the other regions we have now are the other formations. Um, and then the technology to drill horizontally has changed everything. But look, here's your, here's your graph of, of the, the Marcellus in Utica. You'll see it's coming right over West Virginia. You all know this. Um, I've, I'm gonna fly through this really quickly, but it is interesting to see from 2004, the wells drilled. Um, and you can keep an eye on Wetzel County and, and see what that means to us. So when you click through that, the next year, these are unconventional wells drilled by year. Then the next year. Then the next year. Then the next year, 2014, 2016, and where we are, uh, the latest data we have. So if you look at Wetzel County, you can't even see the, the borders on this map because of all the the graphs from the well pads. So it's a good thing for finance. You can argue uh, anti-fracking, fracking, you can argue that, and I'm not gonna take a stand on that. I am gonna take a stand as far as for the finances of Wetzel County Schools. There is no argument. It has been tremendous for Wetzel County. <clears throat> So back to this graph, that used to be so important because that's what our funding came from. It, it, our state aid funding is based on our enrollment. So back in the day, that was most of our revenue. The state aid funding formula, almost exclusively driven by student enrollment and it's over half of our revenue. Well, that's an old slide there. It's not over half of our revenue anymore <clears throat> because what happens, excuse me, 
when when our local share goes up, our taxes go up in Wetzel County, our state aid is cut as part of that funding formula. So what's happened is we have become less and less dependent on state aid. Over time, it became 36% of our revenue. The state aid funding formula was 28, then 15. We went all the way down to 10% of our revenue. 90% of our revenue basically was coming from our local share of taxes. We were on track to be uh, where Doddridge is currently, and that's to have no state aid. Um, but then we had a decline in assessed values two years in a row, which changed things. It started to rebound, and where we are right now is 21% of our revenue comes from state aid. So en enrollment is still a factor, but not nearly as much a factor. Um, Tyler County, by the way, has joined Doddridge County this coming school year as not receiving any state aid because their local share is so high. Um, <clears throat> so if you want to see that in graph form really quick, you can see the yellow 35% um, back in 2012 was our taxes. You can see that change. I'll fly through those. You can see how much in, in graphical presentation, what has happened over time. So we were less dependent on enrollment because our local share was covering the majority of our revenue. To where we are next year with 78% of our revenue coming from uh, taxes, local. Final comps enrollment in the back of your um, in the back of your packet that, that we sent you, you will see exhibits. If you turn to the exhibits, you can see everything when we get to that. You can see our numbers on how we're over the formula. Let's talk about that. Because of our local share, because of the Marcellus and the Utica and the other formations and the horizontal wells, we are able to do something that we never could have dreamed of 10 years ago, and that is employ um, a lot more people than we could have afforded. And, you know, you can paint this as a negative, you can paint it as a positive, but the fact of the matter is we are, it, it can be concerning. Um, what this is telling you is that we are 81 professionals over the funding formula. And when you compare that to headcount, as a ratio, there's nobody that has more of a percentage of uh, professionals over the formula to our enrollment than Wetzel County Schools. And it's not really that close. So I can paint that as a negative. It's concerning if we don't keep an eye on it. Um, if something were to happen to our Marcellus, we would have a drastic uh, reduction. Uh, we, we would have to make several rifts to, to make this work. But right now we're still bringing a, uh, we're in the black. We're still bringing a carryover balance to the board each year. And we've chosen to invest our, uh, our revenue into people. So we are over the formula. Um, but we're also operating financially sound. So state average ratio of professionals per 1,000 kids is 75, almost 76 professionals per 1,000 kids. Wetzel's, we have 105 per 1,000 kids. Part of that, as we all know, is we've chosen to keep operating small schools in this county. Um, the board uh, or our excess levy seems to support that as well with last year or last time we did a levy in 2017, almost 90% of our population uh, supported our levy. So we are continuing to do this. We've done some things that will put you over the formula, like social workers we've added, like nurses for every attendance area, there, the, the Wetzel County Tech Center, some things that would put you over the funding formula we've chosen to offer. PROs. PROs. The next slide is service personnel the same sort of thing you're seeing there. We are number one in the state percentage wise over the funding formula. 
And again, it's not even close. One thing you will notice is your top, you know, five or six counties there, you will see a lot of, first off, you're going to see counties that have excess levies, period. Without an excess levy, you're not going to see uh, any of this. And you're also seeing a lot of the oil and gas counties there. So that's an old slide. What you see is that 652,000 on the handout I gave you. There are some changes since then that I've updated on here. Um, the, some of the RIF numbers have changed from when, when I sent you that packet. Um, the, the cuts that we have approved is re represents about $434,000 in revenue or additional less um, smaller expenditures to our county. Taxes is exhibit B. Um, we've gone over those taxes. This shows the history. I'm going to fly through this of what has happened with our assessed values in our county. Back in fiscal year 10, we would see a small increase from time to time, 4%, 6%, 10%. And then 13 to 14, we started to see the impact of horizontal drilling. And you see a 65% increase in our property value. So that's when you start seeing what's driving the revenue in Wetzel County. Well, that followed up with another 15% on top of that. And then in fiscal year 15 to 16, it went up another 37%. So drastic changes. We had two years in a row of decreases. The current year we're in now, it, it rebounded. And we're back to a 12% increase. And what we're projecting for next year is another 11%. So to confirm, to show you that that is not just uh, accounting talk or, or playing with numbers, these are actual taxes receded through February. So you can see that drastic change that started to happen around fiscal year 13, fiscal year 14, where our tax dollars started going through the roof. Now, that doesn't mean we started receiving $20 million more. It does mean we received $20 million more in, in taxes, but it doesn't mean the county gained $20 million because our state aid went down while this was going on because of the local share. So we're gonna start getting into some things that, that really matter here. Um, just focus on these three numbers here. This is for this current year. What happens, this is our regular levy, this $1.6 million increase. And then our excess levy is underneath of that of a $1.9 million increase basically. Um, what typically happens is when your regular, when your taxes go up, your state aid goes down, which you're seeing down here, which is, says basic, but that's state aid, by about the same amount. But since we have an excess levy, when our taxes go up, we get the, the full benefit from the, the increase in taxes because of our excess levy. If we didn't have the excess levy, it really wouldn't be nearly as big a deal to see these property values go up. So thanks to the voters of Wetzel County for passing this. It's done a lot for our students. But this is this current year. Now, the next year, current the, the year we're budgeting now, you're seeing something a little different. You are seeing another $1.6 million increase, but you're not seeing the decrease down here in state aid. There's a couple reasons for that. Um, but the main one is House Bill 206, or the omnibus bill. It allowed counties to keep an additional 5% of their local share of taxes. And that, that means it's not going to go down nearly as much as it normally does. So moving on, this is one of the most important things I'm going to show you for the future slides. This little blue arrow is showing something. This is the revenue. Now, what you're seeing here is our Weavis report just one page of our Weavis report. I'm choosing not to go through every line of the Weavis report. I know you don't want me to do that. I don't want to do that. I'm touching on the highlights, but this is our revenue. This number right here, this $2.1 million is what we used last year. That's a projected carryover balance, okay? Last year, we budgeted $2.1 million, said we needed to borrow from the prior year to balance this current year's budget. 
We planned for that. We did it that way. I have not put that in the budget yet. I have put zero dollars in. That's a good feeling. We've had to borrow for the past several years. We do, I do not have any money in there yet. Does that mean I don't think we're going to have a carryover? Of course, we're going to have a carryover. So we can put some money in there if we choose to do so. Um, but it's a, we, we used to only put like $50,000 in there. Um, the point is, we can, we can budget some extra revenue if we really decide to do so later in this presentation. Um, just want you to know that there's nothing in there right now when I show you those numbers. And this yellow right here, you might remember this from our carryover budget. We did set aside $2 million in, with our carryover funds. We chose not to spend that $2 million because there's so much uncertainty with the Antero case, with, with uh, some other things going on. We chose not to uh, spend all of our carryover. So if we, do, if we spend every dime of our budget, we're going to at least have a $2 million carryover because that's set aside right now. So the plan was we might need that. We didn't know what our assessed values were going to be. We didn't know it was going to go up another 11%. So the truth of the matter is, I feel comfortable that we could budget a little bit there if we want to, because we did set this money aside. So where we are now, this is an old slide as well, because when I changed those RIF numbers to the actual RIF numbers, where we actually are, these are all the runs I do to balance a budget. We have to present a balanced budget on May 11th. That is where we're adopting the proposed budget. That means my revenue has to equal my expenditures. And honestly, right now where we are is, you might as well say we're budgeted. With a $44 million budget, we're balanced. I mean, I've got $9,700 left over to spend right now. But also understand, I haven't put any extra revenue in for carryover. We'll, we'll talk about that later. So here's the big question. Why is it a tight budget? All this extra money, I showed you that graph, um, all the money we're receiving. Why is it, you know, why is it a tight budget when a revenue is much higher than it was eight years ago? Well, one, we already talked about the state aid going down because of declining enrollment. That has happened over time. But the main reason why that it's, I wouldn't call this a tight budget, but it's not as, um, there's not as much wiggle room there as you would think. But here are the main reasons why. The board chose to, gave, to give a 3% raise in fiscal year 16. That's a county raise um, to increase the salaries here in Wetzel County. When we did that in 16, you know that affects 17, 18, 19, 20, and further on out. We followed that up with a 2% raise in fiscal year 18. Those are raises that we've committed to, that we have to continue taking those um, out of our budget first. We offered the Benny card to our employees, which has been a tremendous uh, benefit. That's about $500,000 a year. One-to-one -one initiative that we started, that's, that's few hundred thousand dollars a year that costs us to run that program. We have to maintain that. And we've chosen to. Textbooks are still an expensive, expensive proposition. I've got a slide on that later. Um, student supplies is a good thing we did several years ago. That was a long time coming. Parents shouldn't have to buy really anything, maybe a lunchbox and a backpack. Other than that, we provide everything to our students. So that's expensive. And of course, the big one is that one right there. We are 160 positions over the funding. And so those are costs that we have chosen uh, to incur. I'm not even gonna go over this. I'm gonna fly through some of these. You've got it in your packet. Um, these budget notes, just stop me if you need to, but I'm gonna fly through some of these things to get to what we really need to talk about. There's no pay raise in the budget for this year, um, other than what we've already granted in the past. Um, Medicaid, we're not budgeting yet. That'll come later. It, there's no changes to employee and employer health premiums. Uh, there will be an increase 
slight increase in life insurance rates that employees will incur, but nothing to affect our budget. <clears throat> workers comp, just to tell you, we're, we're on a good trend here. Our workers comp rate, uh, there's something called an EMOD rate. And if it's the EMOD rate is one, that means you're at your industry average. Um, if you can look down here at the bottom, we were up to as much as 1.35 workers comp rate in fiscal year 17, which means we're doing worse than everybody else in our industry. The past couple of years, we have been well below the industry average. So that's helping our costs with workers comp. Um, supplies and equipment, we're meeting the current levy call. This is something I do want to talk to you about because I think it'll come up. The budget includes $22,760 to be paid to the WVU Extension Office. That's an increase of $5,000 over what we have done the past several years. Um, they've requested that. Um, I think they requested it last year. I don't think we did grant it last year. Um, but I'm just telling you, it's in there now. Um, if you want to remove that, we can remove that. But I've got the, the, their full request, $22,760. Again, that used to be on our levy call. It's not on our levy call anymore. Um, but we've been continuing to help support that program. The libraries are still going to get their 10000 per library per the levy call. That's in the budget. Um, child, this is still also in the levy call. We are providing our free meals and breakfasts and lunches to our students. Our county contribution to that is approximately $800,000. This is... Um, I, I left this in here because I want to just explain to you part of what that omnibus bill did. There are a lot of things that we've got a lot more flexibility on. One of those is bus replacement funds. Um, you had to jump through some hoops to, to be able to use those funds for something other than replacing buses. That's not the case anymore. It's, it's really, it's still, it's still spelled out as bus replacement funds, it's really a block grant that we can use it however we choose. Um, and this is a lot of words for me to tell you what's important, what we have to decide. Where we stand at this time for the first time in several years, we do not have to borrow from prior years to balance next year's budget. We are with the our property taxes and our state aid, we have a balanced budget right now with what I've got in there. Um, so I have nothing in there for an estimated carryover. We can talk about that if we want to add something. <clears throat> Bank interest, boy, our interest was doing great. And then this COVID-19 thing came and we're earning hardly, with all the money we have in the bank, we're hardly earning anything as far as interest wise. That's just how it is. We're still covering all co-curricular and extracurricular trips, the cost of that, um, medical education programs. We have five resource officers in the budget. I think I have this in a later slide. Uh, final comps, I'm almost done with all this. Sub costs are back under control. What a large cost that was to our county. I'm gonna show you a graph later on that. And it's important to know we're required to budget a, an amount for a contingency. And we have a, in a separate project, uh, an amount of one, a little over $1.5 million that we've had in there the past several years for contingency reserve. Hey, Jeff, with the sub costs, has that changed? Uh, seen big figures since uh, we've been out and not having subs? I mean, or, or yeah, that, that, that's, I'm comparing last, full year's costs, but yes, absolutely. Our sub costs are going to drop this year, big time. But And then any unemployment from some of that, uh, I think they did open that up for them now. Yeah. So I don't know if that will come we're, up. We're receiving some of those unemployment uh, claims mm -hmm. to pay. That's going to, it's going to increase our unemployment costs, but our sub costs are going to go way down. Now, the main reason our sub costs have gone down, I think, is we stopped pulling teachers a couple of years ago out of the classroom a lot that we were doing. Yeah. And that was a big request from you all, the board members. I mean, we, we when I came here, I remember that was mentioned big yes. time that we were out. So I think 
Uh, we've got that in graph form here a little later. It, it really is impressive what that saved us. All right, moving on. Revenue by source. That's an exhibit back there. Shows you, I've already shown you that graph. I'm gonna go through that. I'm actually going to fly through all these slides. You have that if you wanna look at how the state aid funding formula works and how each step gives us money. It's all there. We got other things to talk about. He's flying now, look at that. He's going look at that. that. Um, expenditures by category is graph. I'll let you guys catch up to me because I know, I, and I'll get a drink. What page are you on, Jeff, now? So they, they're looking at their book, too? What's that? The page page 20. wise, too. 20, gotcha. <clears throat> so, obviously, we're a service industry. 79% of our budget right now is going towards salaries and the costs related to salaries. So, what that means is when you take out your salaries and your utilities, yeah, we've got a $44 million budget, but we've already committed to those salaries. So all that's left is 19% of that to really do everything else with. So that, that's an interesting slide because I, I think back when I was at Work County, we, we had one person over the formula. We had three little schools, I think uh, right about a thousand or whatever, but we had a teacher retire and uh, I wasn't going to replace it because that one person was paid through our excess levy. I think we had a 90% levy, so we didn't have the money. But yeah. it was interesting that, uh, you know, one person over the formula, the excess levy paid for that one person. And then where we see we're at, but that was in 2000. Uh, and Work County at the time was the smallest mm -hmm. school system in the state. So that was interesting. And, and just to be clear how things have changed since I've been here, I know when we started – when I started here, it was our challenge to get to zero every year, just like it was for you. We tried to get as close to that funding formula. We might have ended up four or five people over in professional and service. But again, our enroll, if nothing else changed, but our enrollment, um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be more over the formula. And the needs of, of students, you know what I mean? That's changed. The social emotional one has been, in, and like I said, you look at our poverty there. That's the that's a huge thing. We've got uh, IEPs dictating a lot of things. So uh, yeah. it's uh, but 160. That's a 160 bit. is a big number. Um, and again, I, I think I need to, I, it's my opportunity to make sure the board's aware of this. I don't want to talk down to you guys because you know it as well as anybody, but it is important to know we can afford the 160. We have been affording the 160 over the formula. But things can change quickly, and we've seen that in some other counties with coal. Uh, I want to talk about that here in a little bit, and we have to be prepared to know what we need to do if that happens, because I'm, I'm just going to say it. There's obviously the only reason we can operate the small schools that we operate in Wetzel County is because of this oil and gas revenue that's coming into our county and the excess levy that supports it. So other if if that were to go away, if something were to happen, we would have drastic changes to making Wetzel County. And, and Jeff, the levy now, right now, we're, we're, are we in year two of it or three? I'm trying to think. Uh, it passed in 17 for the 18-19 school year. We're in year two. Two. Yes. And then you, uh, when we start working on it on the last year of it for? 20, 2022, we'll, we'll have the election. Yeah. And, was, and that was the highest passage rate that Wetzel County's had too, yes. correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There, there, is, there is no better way to see this oil and gas, um, all the activity coming back to the students and coming back to Wetzel County than passing that. Because we receive the majority of the taxes in, in the county. The county commission receives some. The school system receives the majority. There is no better way to make sure that but that some of that revenue makes it back to our county than through an excess levy, and, and our voters understand. That. And, the, and the hard part, like I said, we just went through personnel season, and uh, you know, Bill Mr. Jones, the former superintendent, you know how negative that issue is in personnel, and when you're cutting and and doing anything, and what that does to the the whole system. But I've been, like I said, in places where you had to cut secretaries to half time in the little schools and all that, and how negative the system comes out on those things is, is difficult, but 
again, that's been a positive issue we went through. And uh, you know, we're hitting May, just finishing personnel season, and that, that was went through pretty good. Hopefully we can get those people back, though, in some time. So Tron Nutrition Budget. Um, course participation drives everything. This is going to show you, it's an updated graph of who all is participating in this um, free lunch program, free breakfast program. And it's changed a lot. We jumped on board, not, we weren't the first, but we were fairly early. Jeff, you ever hear why, ever, ever hear why Mon or Putnam's not participating? I have not. I was ask Amanda that, that would be interesting. Um, Utilities projection, it's in the back. You can take a look at that. I go through a projection of what our utilities are going to cost every year. Our textbooks, I talked about how much that's going to cost us. We have a large adoption coming up with English and language arts. It's real expensive. Um, we're going to need almost $600,000. Um, some of that, we've got some excess money this year in our textbook fund that can cover some of that. But that is surely, uh, that's an expensive deal. If you want to see some of the allocations that the schools get directly from us, I've got a few slides here that show that. Um, they also have their own bank accounts um, that they have at the school with their class accounts and different things, uh, but we also give them allocations mainly from step seven funds that, for example, furniture and staff development, and technology, co-curricular activities, um, guidance, academic, band gets an allocation every year. Art gets $7 per student for each school. Science gets $7 per student for each school. There's positive behavior support money that, that we've been given for several years to the schools that they can use to help reward and incentivize children. Uh, library gets an allocation and then spring orders we give an allocation. Here's the sub cost that I was talking about. This is a graph that my accountant, uh, Matt Duke, who's sitting back here behind the screen, helped put together for me. Um, but it really shows the first slide is the professional sub cost. And you can see we were over a million dollars, $1.1 million in sub costs just two years ago, three years, complete full years ago. Um, that saved that's four and $500,000 a year that we can spend on other things because our sub costs aren't um, nearly what they were a couple years ago. And that's with pay raises. So there were pay raises by the legislature, which increased sub costs, and we're still saving those, those funds. This is a neat graph because it breaks it down by school. If you can see, for example, you know, I'm just picking on Magnolia here is $229,000 two years ago. It's down to about twenty-nine, dollars $30,000. Um, some of these things aren't controllable. Sometimes you have a lot of babies being delivered in one particular year, and we need subs in those classrooms. Um, but you wouldn't see that kind of drop without some emphasis on fixing that issue. And this is yes. the service personnel. You can see the same kind of trend there. The board members, have you guys met Matt? I think he may have been at a board meeting, but Matt, yeah. if you just, okay, everybody has, okay. And expenditures by purpose. This is an interesting graph. It shows, you know, where, where your money's going. Of course, the majority is going to instructional programs directly, but we have to maintain our facilities. That represents 13.67% of our budget administration, transportation, food service, it shows you our percentages. All right, we're getting to the meat of it now. It's some decisions that we need to make. Just so you know, some items that are already in the budget that, that we've talked about. We've got five PROs in the budget right now, existing PROs we have currently. We've got I just showed you that slide on the extra supplies allocation we've been given to the schools. We didn't always do that for art and science. We started that a few years ago. Um, moving on. We have two school buses in the budget. Our excess levy calls for one. Um, I've talked to Brian Jones, who's sitting behind the screen as well. 
and we're able to, we have a pretty, we've done a good job with our bus fleet over the past several years and we can do, get by with two this year. Our laptop lease is in there. That's roughly $340,000 a year. Um, drug testing, that is, that's an expensive uh, deal as well. The drug testing we have to do for our CTE programs. Our summer labor, I know we talked about that in a previous board meeting. Still have to budget it. You never know what will change. Um, and some of this will be budgeting it for next summer because that starts some half of that is going to be paid in one year and half of it's going to pay, be paid in the next year. That's about what it costs us. Again, if something happens, we don't have the program this year, well, that'll just end up being part of our carryover balance or something we can transfer out later. That's your positive behavior. Um, Jason learning we have in the budget again. ACT prep incentive plan. We have that in the budget. That's an interesting year. I don't know how all that's going to play out with um, with what's going on uh, with the coronavirus as well. But this is a neat program that I think Mr. Toman brought a little back from Richie, where we're paying an incentive plan to, to take our classes and help our kids earn that promise scholarship. Items already in the budget again, drug prevention education. We've got $15,000 in the budget there that we can use to help with that problem. The teacher supply list items where the parents don't have a list at Walmart of things they need to buy for their students anymore or for their kids anymore. That's roughly $215,000 a year. What we're buying. Um, copy or lease for the schools, we cover the cost of that. Benny card, we're continuing that program. That's in the budget. Um, it's about $1.4 million in professional development. Uh, that includes the math coach, the literacy coach, the two uh, TISs we have, and then our summer academy uh, days that we have in the summer. That includes all of those costs. Just wanted to reiterate, last year the board gave a raise to coaches. That's still in there. Um, We're working on the academy for this summer. I don't know if the board members are aware of that, but uh, we've got some sample things that uh, both uh, Ms. Stanford and Mrs. Wells is putting together with other, other directors. So we've got the academy plan depending on uh, what we're able to do. Now these are new items that I already have in the budget right now. One of them is two additional social workers. Um, and, and I, yeah. I don't know, Mr. Toman, you want to talk about that? I will. My my uh, concern, to, well, I told asked Jeff to put that in there, and I haven't even brought it to you guys to, to vote on a posting. Anything we have new, we always bring to the board members to approve a posting. But two additional, you know, we have Terry, uh, Terry Beatty and Jacqueline Watkins, and they, they share the schools. But you know, we may need to spread some things out. If we get kids back with all this, uh, the social emotional issues going on and being out to give support to uh, all the county of four, and, you know, maybe in time it might be that we need more. You know, when you look at New Martinsville School, the size of that and, and saying, OK, one for New Martinsville Magnolia, maybe we need to split that up and have one and a half and do some things differently that way. And uh, that's that was my plan. But uh, just some conversation with Jeff was putting this together. That might be a huge need right there. And uh, just want to let you be aware of that. So, The summer maintenance list. I want us to go take a look at that. You've had a chance to look at that. The next several screens, um, I've broken it down um, on this presentation per attendance area. The items, what happened is Mr. Jones, Mr. Cook, uh, Mr. Toman and I went around to all the schools and looked at the needs and talked to the principals about the needs they have in their buildings. Um, the items in yellow are the ones that are in the budget currently. Again, I'm telling you, we have a balanced budget where we are right now, pretty much. Um, we have some room to add some additional revenue if we need to, but these are the items as of right now are in the budget. Again, just so you understand, and I'm sure you do, any, any carryover balance we have 
as of June 30th, when I get to those financial statements and finish that, it won't be done until September. We'll have some additional funds if things go the way they're going to budget at that time. Um, but all right. Here's uh, Magnolia New Martinsville School. Again, the items in yellow are the ones. One thing I do want to point out, one of the things at Magnolia that I think is needed um, is the auditorium renovations at Magnolia. You know, that's used a lot. It's, it's, there are a lot of improvements that can be done there. Um, I know other schools use that auditorium for some of the plays and, and, and such, but it, it's really, for a county that's got a little bit of money, I think we need to do a better job with. And you know, Valley High School had that grant through Randall Reed Smith's office and uh, was huge help, but it's it's out there. We're going to keep competing for that. But, uh, you know, uh, Commissioner uh, Randall Reed Smith has been a very good uh, friend to Wetzel County. So I just. Uh, yes, he has. Um, it's New Martinsville's school's turn we started a few years ago rather than just do a room here at one school and a couple wings at another school we're going school by school now with carpeting and tile it's new martinsville school's turn to on the list payton city high school there's some things there um there's a couple minor things here awnings we we had a request from Payton City Elementary School, I think 100 High School had a request for an awning as well, where if you, you know, when you go 100, there's no awning over the door. There's no, in, if it's raining and they're waiting for the be buzzed in, just an awning there to, for the public, where the kids pick up at, New, at Payton City Elementary, where the parents pick up, there's no awning back there. And Tammy had said they, several people stand in the rain waiting at the door for their kids. So just a, not a real expensive deal to get that taken care of. Then Valley High School, actually it says Paint New Hydroponics Lab. We're actually doing a part of that. You talked about Randall Reed's grant. We've got a little bit of money left over on that grant. So we're gonna, we're actually gonna do a PO right away to get that painting done. Not the hydroponics lab, I went back, the, the auditorium. Um, Hydroponics Lab, we're still in several discussions about how we're going to make that work. That's not as easy as it. That's another discussion for another time. And uh, Short Line School, you can see the Tech Center. You know, we did our window project in Wetzel County several years ago. That didn't include the Tech Center. Um, you know, we've got that shatterproof glass in all of our uh, windows in the county, but the tech center, we're, we're looking at replacing those. Part of that will be for efficiency, but part of it will be for security as well. And then we're doing the doors right now with the carryover balance, um, but that's part of why we need to do the parking lot. If we're doing brand new doors and the parking lot is a little bit higher than the elevation of the doors, you're going to have water running in and damaging some of our doors. So this does include Additional paving, we're trying to get a quote still on not doing that, on getting it separately, but this includes the paving where the playground was. I don't know if, if that's needed or not, but that's something that's come up. Um, paving out, out to the road there. Major request, not currently in the budget. Just so you know, some things that we still have out there. PCE, gym, or cafeteria. We do have $607,000 that we started with the fiscal year 19 carryover for that project. Again, we got a couple estimates. The higher estimate, I believe, was $2.7 million. That's what I'm remembering. So we did start a fund to, to start that. This doesn't have any additional money going into there with this current budget. Um, short line school roof is going to need done eventually. Um, I think we can get by another year. HVAC short line school is, we're still, um, it's still operating, but it's getting old. HVAC in the gyms comes up from time to time. I don't know if we need to have this on the list. I'm just letting you know it's not on in our budget. This is something we talked about making room for the Wetzel County Tech expansion. Um, again, if we're going to move other uh other courses in that, other programs in that building, we're gonna to need to find a place for maybe maintenance and storage for child nutrition, things like that. 
again, this budget does not have anything, any of that in it. So here's where we are. That again, that's an old slide. Revised. Um, so the the new number where we are right now currently is we are roughly balanced. I mean, ninety seven hundred dollars and a forty four million dollar budget is is balanced. I'll, I'll clean that up to make it exactly balanced to the penny before we're done. Um, and we currently have some large projects in the works for this summer and next school year. These, just so you know, these items are already in the works. We're already working on the short line school sewage plan. We've, these are things we've done mainly with the carryover balance. Valley High School Field House. Payton City Elementary Playground. Payton City High School lot, we're, that's already in the works for the, the grass area by Payton City High School. It's not on this list. Um, 100 High School Field House. Those are already, or, and then the remaining schools for the beautification project. Those are all being done already. We don't need to budget those. We've already taken care of that. They're in process for this time. And again, now we're getting into the, I'm wrapping this sucker up. I have not yet put in the $2 million reserved for this purpose with a fiscal year 19 carryover. Again, if we want to budget some carryover funds, we can. But we have to think about some things. Um, my last bullet there, should we set aside additional contingency funds due to the uncertainty of the effect of the COVID-19 on future tax collections. That's your big, you know, I told you I know how big the pie is. We know what our revenue is going to be. The only thing that really, really comes into play is, is somebody not going to pay their taxes? Um, this is a quote I found online that, you know, you know, oil prices were actually in the negative, unprecedented negative numbers there not too long ago. Uh, there's not a much of demand for oil right now as there used to be. In a $20 oil environment, 533 U.S. oil exploration and production companies will file for bankruptcy by the end of 2021, according to Rice State Energy. At $10, there would be more than 1,100 bankruptcies. Rice State so what I'm saying with that, Let's break this down to our main revenue source. That's taxes, our regular levy taxes and our excess levy taxes. Okay. We're, we're budgeting $15.5 million that we're going to receive for our regular levy and almost $18 million for our excess levy. In my 19 years here, we've always exceeded our tax budget every year. Never been a problem. What we budget here has been, I have some cushions in there for uncollectibles, <coughs> protects us a little bit, but it's never been a problem. But what if, and I don't know if, if there ever was a time to say what if, it might be now. What if some of these, and that's what's happened in some of the other Southern counties is they had their, their tax budget and then companies went out of business. So if that were to happen, if something were to happen there, we're counting on this money. So we do have a contingency fund. Should we set aside some other contingency funds? Because we don't know what's going to happen. We know what our projected tax collections are, but that was done prior to this whole um, epidemic. And they also mentioned that in my state superintendent's meeting also, the gas counties uh, be aware of that. So yeah. And you, you guys are aware, like um, with like Boone and all of the counties down south with, you know, having a, I can't remember how many they cut that one year. It was it was horrible, and very negative uh, yeah. for the community and, and everything there. So. Items to consider. The major request from the prior slide, uh, not the you know, where we talked about all these major items that we're not doing anything with right now, we can consider putting something in there. Um, additional items on the maintenance list, if there are some things that, that maybe the board wants to discuss that we 
you, we don't have in right now or things we have on that we shouldn't have on. We can talk about that. This full steam ahead initiative. Um, right now, the I, I don't have it in there. $125,000 is, is what I've received from Ben and Tammy on, you know, where they came and presented to the board on this steam initiative. I don't have it in, but I, I can add it if we add revenue with the carryover balance. Um, and this is one I, I, I've thought about for a while, and I like the idea of it a lot. I don't know if the timing is right now with this. I, I'm not sure. I, at one point, I thought it was perfect timing. Um, in, the, in your exhibits, you can see this. Professionals in Wetzel County rank 11th in the state as far as where our average pay tables are. We're 11th in the state in Wetzel. Our service personnel are 26 in the state. Um, if we gave a county $870 raise for service personnel, it would bump Wetzel to 11th. So it's a logical thing to do is to match the service personnel with our professionals. Um, certainly not required to do, but but that's that would put us professionals in service both 11th in the state. Um, the cost to do that. Exhibit I, by the way, shows the rankings. I think I put that in your packet. The cost to do that um, with 185 FTE and service personnel, when you add in some of the costs, you know, you give a pay raise, you're also, your extra trips are going to go up because that pay raise, you have to factor in that, your overtime rates are going to go up. Your total rate, it's going to cost about 225000 a year. Again, it's a commitment you're not just making now, you're making a commitment for future years. Um, it's just tough decisions right now. I, I like the idea of it personally. Um, but again, oil and gas, um, what's going to happen there? We initially, finally, we initially brought that up. What back in, uh, November or December, Jeff, you brought that, uh, yeah. that discussion. So, and all that information is on the state website too. If you ever want to look at that, the members of the board. Um, and any other additional items the board wants to add or subtract? And that is the end of my presentation. So now it just comes to my goal is I have to have a balanced budget on May 11th. I have to bring that to the board. I have to publish it in the newspaper. Um, and then on the 26th, we will adopt it, have a public hearing and adopt it. Um, but there are a lot of things to discuss, but I think I've covered just about everything I can cover, but I'll be glad to help be part of this discussion. I am going to stop sharing my screen, Ben, or you already taken care of it, maybe. Okay, where do we go from here? Anybody have anything they want to discuss first? Well, the first thing I'm going to mention is the uh, WVU extension, the $5,000, the additional $5,000. Whenever I was at the budget meeting for them, the explanation is that the $5,000 is to cover a, the cost of an intern for the summer. Right now, it is not a guarantee that they will have an intern. And so it's one of those things where they were saying that they may need the $5,000, but at a later time. Um, last year, if I remember correctly, she told me that it was covered by Title I funds. So we, we did help them out with it. Um, and of course, I, I very much would like to support the program. I just wanted to clarify that it is an additional 5,000, but it's not needed immediately. Uh, Mr. Cook, am I correct? And I noticed, Mr. Lancaster, you had the summer work program budgeted because it kind of hits two school years in a sense or two fiscal years sometimes in terms of when they start. But have we have we um, we haven't bid any of those jobs out, though, correct, Mr. Cook? Uh, we haven't bid any handyman jobs out or the students, I think, is what we're talking about in regards correct. to that. I will not, yeah. um, I'm ready. I've got the application phase ready. 
I'm just waiting for the go ahead as far as to, to start. That, that's just one of the things I've yeah. been asked about recently. And so I just wanted to make sure I was correct that we have not put bid any of those out until we kind of get some certainty as whether, you, whether we can use them or not. And that's right. the summer workers, Mr. Mr. Price. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I get this is interesting, too. And I don't know if you ever you guys ever got any calls this from this, but I get uh, calls from our custodians in the summer that I, I don't know what uh, what contract are they, Jeff? Are they two uh, two twenty? Uh, we have Brian's in here, two forty and two. Hang on. Just say it, Brian. Two twenty eight is most of them. Yeah. And I get that request that. Hey, we know the facilities. We're aware of the facilities. Can you extend our contract and we work through the summer and do some things that way instead of bringing college kids in? So I know that that issue would be a hard part of having college kids mowing where meanwhile they're not on a contract. So that's been brought up. I never uh, brought that to the board's attention when I get those requests because, again, uh, you know, that, that, that piece there, that's interesting when I think about that. And right now we can't uh, – you're worried about a, a high school graduate coming in, but I know people are looking for that money also. So either way, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to have somebody upset. But then again, maybe that's a pleasure you all to make that decision and uh, think that way. But there's some there's some contracts out there that are 228 that, you know, I look at I can look at a couple individuals that know the facility, mow it, keep it taken care of, and then they're off and we have summer uh, kids mowing. And that may be something there that I, I that, that gives you a whole new perspective when you think of that. And I just want to share that with you. But I don't want, again, I, I know I'm probably stepping on toes either way, but I just want to tell you what happens. And sometimes I'm good with making that decision, but I, I get I get the heat. But I just want to bring it out to you guys. And to be clear, I don't need anything from the board. I can present this as a balanced budget right now, but just everything that I've shown you um, is as long as you're aware that what's in and what's out of the budget. If now's the time, if anything, if, if you want to discuss anything that you want me to add or subtract from that budget. <clears throat> Have we heard anything about the PRO for New Martinsville School? You know what? Uh, right now they had that covered, but they're looking at trying to have trainings and, and see if they can get some hiring in. So they had a very interesting uh, uh, council meeting that we went to one night before a board meeting. But they're trying to get people hired. I think uh, I think they you know they have one gentleman running for office, one gentleman going to retire. So New Martinsville PD is uh, getting low on trying to recruit people. If you look at the, across the nation, having individuals applying for the law law enforcement uh, positions are tough, but nothing right now, Mrs. Cooley, but, uh, you know, uh, I think we had somebody covered to the remainder of the year, but it's in our contract to continue that. You know, that's something there too. Sometimes you guys talk about the size of, the, of New Martinsville school. Is that enough for one? Do we need, uh, do we need one at the elementary school? I know that's been mentioned at short line uh, versus some different positions there. So, Short line, you have long drain, uh, uh, you know, uh, Peyton City. So, again, how many do you need? If we have one bad thing happen, then they're always going to bring that up. But just the discussion point, and uh, I know it's been mentioned a couple times about short line the size, you know. Uh, it's, it's interesting. So... Well, I'm pretty sure that they, um, the city council passed it to keep providing the PRO. But my concern with um, if the one officer does get elected, he'll be leaving, the one retiring. If they're not able to cover it and it does move over to the county, does it change our cost at all? Um, not really. Uh, no, whether it's the county, are you asking for whether the county or the city yeah. covers the, no, it, the cost is about the same. It's around 66 grand total. Okay.
Well, I'm just going to throw it out there. The um, presentation from our speech therapist. Um, is there a way that we would be able to um, give them the increase with, I don't want to say the stipulation, but if it does become part of a house bill that they receive the same raise as our teachers or our special education uh, personnel receive, then it would take the place of what we would offer. What you say if if the half if we funded it now or next year and then the house bill passed in a year, then it would just in lieu of that. Is that what you're asking, Mrs. Cooley? Right. If I'm if I understand correctly, it is it died in the house bill and so it's not even on the table. No, that's but correct. But let's say that that is correct. Yeah, it's not, not even on the table. No, it's gone. So they'll reinduce reintroduce if they get somebody a legislature to reintroduce it, reintroduce it, I believe. Right. And so if it does happen to uh, become part of one of the bills and is passed, that it would take the place of what we offer. Um, I, I just I, I feel that they do deserve it. Just to, just to reiterate, the reason we're not doing it is because of, and they're sitting right here next to me, my frequently asked questions on, on uh, House Bill uh, 206. There were several different questions on there on, on how to handle certain things. I mean, we, we got one coming up, by the way, this attendance incentive that's part of that House Bill. We're going to have a lot of figuring out to do pretty soon on who's getting that incentive and who's not and how to calculate all that. But the reason we're not doing it has nothing to do with performance of, of SLPs. It has nothing to do with that. It has simply to do with one particular question on that frequently asked question that's as crystal clear. They're not to get it. Now, can a county board make their own separate supplemental uh, schedule for them? Yes. I mean, we already do. We pay $1,000. Locally to all speech, that's in our policy. So you can change that thousand to whatever you want to change it to, legally. But we're just trying to follow the guidance, and I, the way I understand it, that's what other counties are doing as well, is following the guidance from those frequently asked questions. And, and just, just I don't want to. I just want to clarify some things from the presentation. You know. Wetzel's average salary for speech language pathologists is higher than all of our surrounding counties. Um, we're not low in Wetzel County. Now, whether or not they're entitled to that extra three years, that might be an argument they have um, or whether they should be considered. But, but as far as our salary pay scale, we give that $1,000 supplement. A lot of counties don't do that. And then we do what all other counties do is they, they have up to, Four thousand dollars they can get for having their national certification, but as a state, you know, physical therapists make uh, on average about ten thousand dollars more. Than, your PTs make about ten thousand more than your your speech. That's as a state. It's not just here in Wetzel County. So I just wanted to give you the background on that. Yeah, being a work session, so how do you want the board to proceed with this? Uh, give you ideas, and then we bring that together on the 11th. Uh, you know, because really, the having an action or anything, we can't do that in this work session. There's but no I, action. Yeah. I, there's no action I need. I just need to know if anything the board. And again, it's just a budget, but it's kind of important now that if there are wow. some things that that or especially high dollars, for example, the raise, if the board wants to entertain that next year, I need to make sure I'm accounting for that. I need to put that in the budget. If, if uh, the board wants to set aside money, I, I, I need to put something in for that carry. I think I'm required to put something in for that carryover. I can put $50,000 in there and then anything above 
that we will rebudget in the when we should know a lot more in the fall. So all I need is direction. If they're happy with where we are right now, I don't have to, I don't really need anything. But if there are some major items that you like or don't like in there, I need to know to make that change and get it balanced. I, I don't really need anything at this point. And you approve on the 26th, correct? The, the May 26th meeting? Yes, but it's not going to change from the 11th. <laughs> the 11th, I need to be balanced. Yeah. So I need to get it to the newspaper. It needs to be published in the newspaper, I think, for a couple of weeks. Um, as a balance, but it's not in great detail, but that's part of the requirement. So really, I've got just a, a week or so to uh, to make any changes and make it balance. So it's not like we can come back again and talk about, let's change this, that now's the time to do that. Uh, for, for me, I'm just, just to throw my two cents in it, but um, with all the uncertainty, um, I'm, my personal feeling is let's hold with what you've got. If, if things go okay and we come into September and we, we could, we can do some things then. Um, but I, I'm, I'm a little reluctant to start committing ourselves to things with just the uncertainty that's out there. And so I, my personal feeling is I'm content to leave your budget where it is right now, not make any changes and, and then wait and see what happens and maybe we'll have a clearer image of whether we're going to decrease, you know, what's going to happen with, with the finances, um, maybe by fall. I want to uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Brian. And I, I want to agree with Brian. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes. There's a bad moon rising. I will tell you that. State government's going to be broke. Uh, the state of West Virginia is going to be broke because of the pandemic, as are all the other 50 states. And I look for major cuts to be made just to be able to have basic services. So we need to be very frugal and make sure that we've got money. If we can, more the more money we can put away that we may need in the future. Uh, you're talking about the oil and gas industry. Chesapeake Oil, I believe, has already went bankrupt. And they were in this county. So I think that trend is going to continue also. So we could see our tax revenues decreasing because of the worldwide economy. And it will affect Little Wetzel County. It will greatly affect us. Uh, I saw where, and, and Jeff, Tell me again, I, I right off the top of my head, I can't think of it. How many personnel are we over the formula? 160 total professional service. This board at some point in time has to start addressing that. And I'm not advocating laying off dozens and dozens of people, but in just, just, just an example, if we need two social workers and I'm not, I know that they're needed. We need, those type of positions. But if we can come up with something as a board that if we're going to add a position, then we need to decrease a position. If not, that total over the formula is just going to keep growing and growing and growing, and there'll be a day of reckoning. And, and at that point in time, especially if the oil and gas industry goes south, So I think we need to be as frugal as we possibly can be with this budget and our future budgets until we see what the economic uh, effects of this pandemic and the economy and all of its intertwined is going to have on our county. Well, I, I'm inclined to agree with both of you. Um, I am curious as to the um, the maintenance uh, uh, projects that we have that were listed there. Is is that? I know that Brian is leaving, and there's going to be turnover there. And I guess my question is: is is it realistic for us to expect those projects to be accomplished? I mean, in a reasonable amount of time, that's my first question. 
Um, and, go ahead. I'm going to add Brian standing right here. He can answer that. He's certainly not going to leave us out high and dry, but there are some things. Are we going to, you know, some things, I guess I can answer that and say, we can probably get all those done assuming we're allowed in the buildings to take care of. Okay. Brian will make sure there's a good transition there. Okay. And, and Jeff with Brian right there with the short line project, they haven't started that yet with, because at one point they wanted to, and we didn't know whether we were going to close or not, but there, there's not a, a date on that now is there just if you stand right here i think they can hear you yeah i uh i sent a communication out to both amanda for child nutrition and uh denise building principal on water usage expected water usage i heard back from uh the principal short line that said they were having staff come in uh a few at a time closing up their rooms that means there's going to be water usage. I've contacted Doug Brake with Swiss Valley to see if this company, which is Littman Excavating, will allow us to use minimal water uh, like the company did at Long Drain last year. I have not heard back from, from Doug. We are in the process of, of building a building out there to hold all those pumps in. Long Drain School already had an existing building where those pumps went. Once that building is complete, I would really like to, to get that project underway, but it might entail bringing in port johns <laughs> for staff to use if they need to use the restroom um, so they're cleaning out the rooms. They really wanted to start earlier and Mr. Jones and I were worried that what if they do have us come back we, we had that little option of trying to trying to gamble a little bit hey let's start that project and then oh my gosh and then we got school coming back we'd be in a mess so as, that was that was requested earlier as soon as the governor said we're shutting it down for the rest of the year I think it was that very next day I surveyed to see what the water usage would be and could we start right now and the building principal at short line did not give me a clear answer. If she did, it was, hey, we're going to have people in the building. I'd love to get started. And also, just so everybody's kind of aware, Littman's had also received a multi, multi, multi million dollar paving project here in the northern panhandle. So I saw that. And, and Jeff here, last week when we got served on this, Jeff, you did the PO for Littman. We got the contract from Swiss Valley, signed it, yeah. and, and, and they have been is issued their purchase order. Yeah. 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 But I think I have the answer I need. Um, well, before you, before you say that, okay. I just want to point out one thing with the um, – Jason Learning Program. I thought that during the last budget session we had, um, we were doing the one student, one teacher, and then anything beyond that, we were doing sponsorship. Like right now we have budgeted for the uh, three additional students. I yeah. thought that was only, we were only doing that if it was sponsored. That's, that's because correct. that is such a large, a large amount of money to, to spend. I can answer, to yeah, and that's my it, that's, answer to that is that's the same no amount problem. I budgeted for the past few years. So I didn't make a change on that. If that's what we want to do, I can free up a little bit more funds there. Yeah, and then the package is only one and one or uh, two students, two teachers. So that's fine. And right now with the with the pandemic, they're not going to be traveling outside. Uh, U.S. and may not be traveling anyhow, so that's something that could be put on hold. But you built that in, but whatever that we need on that, that's uh, what less than fifty thousand dollars, I think, is the new contract for that. Yeah. So, I, I'm inclined to, as I said, I and I know this probably puts this is really not what uh, the Jeff and and the financial group there want from us now, but 
I'm inclined right now not not to want to spend a whole lot of anything. Um, there are so many questions on the national level and on the state level. Um, you, you look kind of foolish if you get in the middle of a building program and uh, you, you've got to make major cuts to other other areas. Um, our state and, and our nation, I mean, things are just, I mean, the more you watch things that are going on nationally, um, it's, it's going to become a problem. And I know that delay is not a, it's not a good answer uh, to, to what Jeff wants and whatever, but by the same token, uh, to spend money in a situation where you don't really know what the future is going to bring is, is not very smart either. So I, I'm inclined and I'm, you know, I, I want, I would advise us to kind of put all of this, um, unless these projects have started and, and are in the process, uh, I'm inclined to, I agree with Jay and, and Brian that um, <clears throat> things, things need to be very conservative right now. And if money and if things do change, say <clears throat> the state gets back to normal, the nation gets back to normal in September, things change. You know, I really would like to see us do something with service personnel. I, I really would. I, I think that would be a wonderful thing. But to do that now and then have to look at it in the light of September, I just think that would be a very foolish thing to do. So I would cast, I support Jay and, and Brian. We've got to watch things right now. Um, let's, I would suggest that we put things on hold. And I know that this was kind of a <clears throat> workshop that we're, we don't absolutely have to make decisions, but sometimes a really good decision is no decision. And so, that's, that's what I would suggest. So, the, so, I agree with you. Just understand, we already have a one one and a half million dollar contingency. That's I understand that. Project. I understand if that. You don't do anything additionally. I'm, I'm getting to really what I need to know. If we don't do anything additionally and we don't budget a high carryover number like we have, there should be a couple million dollars there as well. So we could mm -hmm. possibly have. We do nothing now. Three and a half, four million dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and we may need that. Waiting for us. Now, I need to be crystal clear because a lot of these maintenance projects will, for example, the one that just popped in my head, it's $181,000 to pave the tech mm -hmm. center that I've got in the budget right now. Mm -hmm. I don't have to do that, uh, but I need to make sure we're clear on that. Some of those things we need the summer to do. If you don't do it in the summer, you're not getting them done. I know that. If, if that's what you're saying, I guess I kind of need direction, or really Brian's going to need direction on that as to what he can start and what he can not from that maintenance list. Could you give us a, a priority of those maintenance projects that, like, this has to be done and this has to be done and this has to be done, and then what we could hold off on? Yes. Honestly, most of those we could hold off on from just thinking like Brian saying, none of those have to be done. I don't think the ones that have to be done, we're doing. Um, so then I think that's the ones we do. OK. Well, well, the other thing we can do. We can keep it in the budget. It's just the budget, but not act on them right now. And that that. That's just the same as me putting it in a contingency line item. As long as we don't give the green light, it stays in the budget. We can always transfer it out later. So we can yeah. say we budgeted it there, but we're going to hold off and only do essential projects. I think that's fair. Yes. I would go along with that. I think that's the way to do it. I'm really worried as to where this thing could, could end up. Uh, if we get a second wave, I mean, uh, West Virginia has been very, very fortunate. And God, God willing, it will continue. But it could get very, very bad. And, and then you look foolish in spending money that um, you could have used for things that become 
unfunded maybe from the state or I'm, I'm really worried with this thing. I agree. I'm going to say one more thing. I do appreciate this board has always been conservative yeah. and it's helped us be in the position we're in to be able to afford to do the things that we're doing. So I do appreciate that. And, and you've always listened to me ever since I've been here and I do appreciate that. And, and I think, I think we're in good shape to, I think we're in pretty good financial shape to, to, to take care of anything that comes down the road. I hope. Um, but especially if we do what we talked about. When we do open our schools back up and when we will open the schools back up at some point in time, but we may need money to do yeah. things mm -hmm. differently. You know, yeah. I've read about social distancing in classrooms. And so we may be looking at doing things differently and, and that may call that may we may have to have money for that. The, the other thing, Jay, is I don't know where this endless supply of money is coming from, but there's going to be additional money coming our way. That happens a lot with school systems. We already know we're going to get some additional title monies for these sorts of things. So, you know, it's going to hurt somewhere along the road. I don't know. Our governor says he's not seeing any cuts down the road, but somewhere it's going to catch up to us. I don't know where, but I, I do think we'll get extra money to cover some of these things you're talking about. Grants. You know, Jay, you mentioned, I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, Mr. Yeager, you mentioned uh, moving forward, how we might have to do things differently. And I, I agree completely. You know, where where I live, we have internet service, but it comes and goes. I tried logging in this morning on my computer and right now I'm on my cell phone. It And we're one of the lucky ones that we do have internet for the kids doing work at home. But, um, you know, moving forward, I, I really think that we need to start looking into the um, digital textbooks because you know, my kids, they, they don't have textbooks. Now, I know that you can access them online, but that's only when the Internet works. If we have them downloaded to the kids' laptops, it would make a world of difference for the kids to be able to do the homework from home. And, of course, we may never, never need it again. But this could also happen in the fall. It's too all many, up in the air. Too many unanswered questions. I agree, Amy. There, there's so much out there that we don't know. Um, it's just like spending in your, your household uh, budget uh, when there are some unanswered un or questionable things. You take a conservative approach and you don't spend it. And that's kind of where I am. And I hope that maybe in September we have a clear view. And if we do, then we can look at maybe doing some things that we want to do. But um, right now, I think it's, it would be a, a, the prudent way to doing things is exactly what, what Brian and Jay are, are talking about. Jeff, could you clarify or just solidify in my own mind here, if I'm understanding right in, in West Virginia, uh, number one, law requires constitutionally, I believe, that they that West Virginia has a balanced budget. You can't, you're not the federal government. You can't run a, right. a deficit. Correct. And if they have to make cuts, education, I believe, can only be cut by one percent. Am I? If, I mean, obviously, if, if they can come back and change the rules later, but is in my Am I, is my education in that wrong or do you know of anything about what I I'm talking honestly, about? Honestly, I wish I could answer. I can't answer. I've seen mid-year budget cuts only twice maybe since I've been here. Um, and it, it was not, it was never drastic. It really wasn't. So I don't know what the percentages are. During the building construction program at Wetzel County Schools back in 1988, uh, Jay Rockefeller cut the state budget three different times. 
and we were barely able. We had to do major um, adjustments to our building program, and we were barely able to get it through. That was in 88 that Jay Rock, he did it three times. The only time that I'm aware that the state of West Virginia cut, and it did, was the education budget that was cut three different times. But, but just so you know our position, state cuts aren't really the biggest concern when it's only 18% of our budget. Ours is really the what okay. happens to our tax base. Yes. Mm -hmm. way, I, I, I should have said this earlier, but but we appreciate your 19 years of experience. Oh, my. Thank you. It, 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 it helps tremendously to have somebody in your seat that gets it. And thank so, you. so thank you. You have your tape recorder on. I'd like to give you yet another. I'll, I'll play it back on YouTube and record it. I will be good. Well, into your, into your staff I'm, as well, I'm, I know you don't work alone. Thank I you. said it then and I'll say it again. You're very, very, very good at what you do. And I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I have friends who went through the Boone County uh, uh, bankruptcy situation. It was extremely unpleasant, and they're still yet recovering from that. I hope that we have a good communication line with uh, our county assessor so that we have a pretty good idea. I don't expect you to check in with him every morning, but it certainly would be nice to know on a fairly recent uh, basis or regular basis as to where the tax revenues are and, and those kinds of things. I, I think that's awfully important, but thank you. I, Mr. I really Lemley has been excellent with working with me and keeping me updated on things that are happening. I couldn't be happier with that. Uh, I'm in all the, I'm in all the emails also along with the prosecutor, Tim hot. I mean, it's, it's cost at the updates on any, anything like that. It's, it's, He's very efficient, uh, Assessor mm -hmm. Lemley. So I just want to mention also the textbooks. And uh, I think probably about 10 years ago, is talking about doing away with textbooks. And I think you look at that price and, uh, you know, I, I think we should be digitally a long time ago. But that's just something that happens. Uh, it's there. Uh, you know, what's frustrating is when, when kids want a book and can't take them home and, and all those mm -hmm. things. That's that's the frustrating thing. But I think textbooks are something that maybe in the near future, like what Mrs. Cooley said, I, I totally agree. And you see what Doddridge is doing with City Neck, uh, getting online service throughout their county. We have that project that's going out Route 7 and Route, uh, tw uh, I think, 18 and, and 20, going through Tyler. But uh, hopefully things pick up. But that, I think our, uh, our uh, national legislatures are working on that. So hopefully that changes. I agree, but... Just because you have internet doesn't mean it always works. Yeah. Oh, and you know, Mr. Cook and I were involved with a, a grievance conference uh, yesterday, and and my internet suddenly right here went gone. It, it popped right off, and uh, and uh, right in the middle of it. So right here in town, suddenly. So, so to summarize, what I'm going to do. I am going to, I have to have a balanced budget. I'm close right now. I do, I am required to budget something for a carryover. So I'll probably put $50,000 in there for a carryover, expect to carry over, or I could put a higher number and put it in contingency. I'll take care of that, but I'll, I'll probably just budget a very small number. And then any carryover balance we have, we'll be able to decide what to do with it. And we could set it all in contingency when we get the actual carryover. So as far as the maintenance projects, Brian, I'm gonna make sure you're aware we're going to keep it in those highlighted budget. We're gonna keep it in the budget, but we're gonna only do the essential projects at this point until we see what happens and then we can, we'll, we'll worry about that. Yeah. Who defines essential is the question. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure we clear everything with Mr. Tome. All right, I think I have what I need unless there's anything else. No, I just want to make sure that we take out the three additional student argonauts since we had already discussed having that covered with a uh, sponsorship. I can do that. Board wishes. That's not a problem at all. 
Well, very, as, as Mr. Tumman said, very likely they're not going to be traveling anywhere anyway. So, you know, I, I think, um, I think that's, that's something we can do. Yeah. And like Mrs. Cooley said, if we had, uh, we had a great amount of kids that applied for the Argonaut position. And when that came up, uh, if we had additional trips, I would have brought that to the board. I know Mrs. Cooley was looking uh, right when we talked about that. She thought, said she could find some fundraisers. So we really hasn't, we haven't crossed that. I was looking at the announcements. I had the applicants that submitted, but since this happened, we just put it on hold. So I think you got an email on that at that time. So uh, the sponsorships and then asking those sponsorships now is, is a whole nother area where we were at in uh in the first part of March to where we're at now is, is different. Right. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Mr. Tumman, anything? I, uh, I just want to mention that I did have the announcement of teacher of the year, uh, service of the year will be announced pretty soon, but uh, teacher of the year was Mrs. Deborah price. So I uh, had that announcement yesterday and it's hit social media. So if you, uh, See that Mrs. Deborah Price is the our teacher of the year, and I think she has an excellent chance to be a state teacher of the year. I think she does. I'll let you know that. And uh, from doing this process and and uh, being down there and seeing the applicants, uh, I think she has an excellent chance and uh, start working at a project. She has to submit by May fifteenth. That's the hard part. So service was pushed back to June one. I think Mr. Cook. They moved that back to June one. The applicant application there, but uh, yes, sir. that process uh, got a lot of recognition stuff to do here soon. You know, you got retirement, you got teacher of the year, service of the year. You've got my gosh, Amanda, director of the year. We got all these things going on. But how can we do those? We're trying to be creative, and uh, that's uh, what we can do to do our best to recognize and. And recognize our kids. I mean, uh, the graduation piece, just FYI, we're in a workshop. You've seen those that information. I commend the principals. There's a lot of uh, lot of drama out there across the state of one county doing something, another county doing this. Uh, now they moved it back. I think we're, we're looking at the end of July. Uh, if we need to approve that in May, we'll, we'll bring that to you. But again, it all depends. I, I have a task force meeting on the graduation tomorrow at two o'clock and we'll hear what's going on there. But I know a lot of people are doing drive through. I know uh, some drama hit that on social media. They didn't want this stuff and that. And, uh, but I think the principals went at it. I, I talked to my student advisory group personally and uh, tried to get them to get the feel of the students. The principals, I think, talked to, I think most of their seniors and uh, that was a pretty good deal. But I think what we have is a good plan and we'll come by, uh, and, and get that soon so it's busy thank you guys for your support thanks to all the directors principals i think we've been communicating very well and uh you know the hard part is like mr cook and i was talking about 9 30 last night it seems like as soon as he walks away from the tv or or walks somewhere to somewhere you know i call or somebody that way is something happens he calls me. It's just constantly seems like as soon as you put down your phone, someone tries to get a hold of you then or something like that. But it's been constant 24 seven. And I can't thank everybody. Yeah. Enough. Board members, anybody, anything. Again, do thank everyone for continuing, uh, uh, the, uh, lunch programs that we're doing with the kids and all that. Um, I, it's, it's very humbling to know that, that our teachers and service personnel are continuing to do the things they're doing. Um, you know, these are very difficult times to make decisions. I think what we've done today has been a very good thing to do. Um, Having said that, if there are, there's nothing else, I move for adjournment. I'll second. Second moved, the motion. Moved and properly second to adjourn. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Let the record show that at 10.42 a.m. we are adjourned.
Stay safe, everybody.